we start this video with a very simple constraint on a complex variable set. The solution includes all complex numbers located at a distance of two units from the origin. Now let's have a look at a few similar yet more complicated equations. When the largest power of the polynomial, also known as degree of the polynomial, gets larger, smaller features appear in the shape of the solutions. You can picture these lines as contours of a gradually ascending mountain. Can you see that all the curves touch each other at the common point of minus 2? Apart from this point, each higher curve is surrounded completely by the lower lying contour. Remarkably, these equations are the start of a convergent sequence of polynomials. In this context, convergence implies that finer and finer zoom levels are required to distinguish solutions of successive elements of the sequence. Have a look at the solution generated by the tenth element of this sequence. It is defined by a polynomial of degree 1024. Can you anticipate the ultimate limit of this sequence? It unfolds into the boundary of a fractal, the well-known Mantelbrot set. When I saw a similar animation for the first time, I immediately wanted to know the answer to the following questions. How is the computation of these curves carried out? What is the origin of these polynomials? And why is the number 2 specifically chosen on the right hand side? You are invited to embark on a brief journey with us to disclose additional secrets of the Mandelbrot set. Although this has been known since the 80s, to our knowledge, it has not appeared on YouTube so far, so be prepared to hear something exciting and new. The computation of the Mandelbrot set boils down to the fundamental operations of adding and multiplying complex numbers. For every point c in the complex plane, a sequence of numbers Zn is generated following the recursive definition. Despite its apparent simplicity, the dynamics of these sequences are profoundly influenced by the choice of the point C. We will walk through a few examples to get a better understanding of the intriguing phenomena at play. The computations become notably straightforward when C is a real value. For the first example, we choose C to be equal to one half. Each sequence starts with zero. In the first iteration, 0 is squared and then 1 half is added. For the next iteration, the result is squared again and increased by 1 half. A few iterations are enough to observe that the values of the sequence will grow unboundedly. Moving on to the second example, when we initiate the sequence for c equal to minus 2, the result of the iterations is a constant sequence with a value of 2. Let's venture beyond the real number line and explore the sequence when c is the imaginary unit i. Surprisingly, this sequence oscillates between two distinct values. We close this introduction to the Mandel set with one last example that shows a sequence oscillating between five different values. The Mandel set is a subset of the complex plane. It includes all points c where the sequence remains bounded and does not grow towards infinity. The first value 1 half therefore unmistakably falls outside of the Mandelbrot set, while the rest of the points are elements of it. When we illuminate the complete Mandelbrot set, it manifests its well-known fractal structure in a light blue hue. We have seen that the sequence for C equal to the imaginary unit stays bounded, yet looking at the plot, it seems to lie outside of the Mandelbrot set. Upon closer inspection, there seems to be a bridge linking it to the rest of the set. However, the imaginary unit gives the impression of being an isolated point. Regardless of how deep you zoom in, no neighborhood of I seems to materialize as part of the Mandelbrot set. If you know additional insights in this curiosity, your comments will be greatly appreciated. Let us formally compute the values of the first few iterations. Beginning with 0, the first value of the sequence is simply the value of c for which the iteration is performed. Moving to the next iteration, the value of the sequence is computed by plugging z1 into the iteration. Next, 
this expression for Z2 is then squared again and increased by the value of C. This already answers the first question. If you inspect the right hand side of these equations, you will find the polynomials used to define the curves in the introduction. The corresponding contour lines are the sets of all points where the absolute value of the polynomials is equal to 2. Therefore, these polynomials hold the key to understanding the structure outside of the Mantel-Brot set. However, as each iteration progresses, the degree of the polynomial doubles. That makes the computation increasingly cumbersome. By the 10th iteration, the polynomial contains over 1000 terms. This makes it impractical to write it down entirely. Nevertheless, this is a task well suited for a computer. Only a few lines of code are needed to define this recursive relation and generate these polynomials. Now let us shine a spotlight on the value of 2 hanging out on the right hand side of our equations. Honestly, any larger value than 2 would do the trick as well. But 2 happens to be the smallest possible value that works in accurately computing the Mandelbrot set. One can show that the value of 2 is kind of like a point of no return for every sequence. If at any point the absolute value of an element in a sequence crosses the barrier of 2, all following elements will be ever increasing in size and swiftly make their way to infinity. Let us check out a few examples. Points located far from the Mandelbrot set typically cause the sequence to diverge explosively after just one or two iterations. As we approach the Mandelbrot set, more iterations are required to reach the point of no return. The height in the plotted graph symbolizes the number of iterations needed to exceed the critical value of 2. For instance, the pink pin denotes a point at level 12 indicating that the sequence maintains stability for 12 iterations before it eventually escapes towards infinity. Naturally, if you choose a point within the Mandelbrot set, you remain comfortably distant from the point of no return for all iterations. We show this property one more time for two closely situated points. Initially, the sequences for these two points exhibit comparable behavior. However, as we progress in iterations, one of them unfolds into a sequence with a notably regular pattern, while the other reveals less regular patterns. Eventually, the latter ultimately diverges towards infinity after a little more than 90 iterations. This distinction highlights the sensitivity of the iteration procedure to tiny changes in the initial conditions, leading to divergent outcomes in the behavior of sequences for points in close proximity. Now we are ready to compute the precise contours outside of the Mandelbrot set. These contours in essence highlight regions of the complex plane where the sequences exhibit distinct behavior based on their proximity to the Mandelbrot set. The solution to the first equation is straightforward. The absolute value becomes redundant when the right hand side is multiplied by an arbitrary phase. This phase is parametrized by a real valued angle denoted by the symbol phi and the solution takes the form of a circle with radius 2. Clearly any points outside this circle have already crossed the magic barrier of 2 before the first iteration is even executed. For the second equation, we once again replace the absolute value with a phase, which allows us to solve the quadratic equation. The solution yields two branches and together these branches form the complete contour. However, as you may have noticed, Challenges arise on the horizon. For polynomials with degree larger than 4, explicit solutions for Z become elusive. This circumstance poses a significant obstacle that prevents us from expressing the solutions for Z in closed form. To overcome this challenge posed by the polynomials of arbitrary degree, we turn to a different technique for extracting the shape of the boundary. We apply the square root to both sides of the equation. A mathematically rigorous viewer may raise objections to this procedure. However, a critical insight here is that all the zeros of the polynomials lie within the Mandelbrot set. Therefore, outside this set, we can assume the absence of branch cuts and therefore the square root remains single valued and well defined. Next, we replace the absolute value with a phase again and factor c out of the square root. In the limit of large c, the second term under the square root is small.
Consequently, we can expand the square root into a Taylor series. Using this series, we calculate the expansion of the inverse function, which completes our method. While the mention of Taylor expansion and inverse functions might sound like fancy mathematical jargon, the underlying ideas are not as formidable as it may seem. These two lines of computer algebra provide a glimpse that this process is essentially an elementary but tedious computation, well within reach for those familiar with slightly advanced concepts of calculus. Let's take a moment to grasp this approximation. Remember that the symbol of capital Phi is just a simple way to describe a circle with radius of root 2. The first term precisely represents this circle with a counterclockwise orientation. The second term shifts this circle to the left by one half. The third term superimposes a circle with smaller radius and clockwise rotation. The chain of arrows illustrates the sum of these three terms and it nicely traces out the boundary. In our context, the exterior of this boundary includes all the points C, for which the iteration surpasses the point of no return in less than two iterations. Furthermore, viewers that are familiar with Fourier transformations might recognize that the coefficients of the inverse polynomial are connected to the Fourier coefficients of the boundary. And for those of you approaching this cautiously, we have color-coded the face of the complex values for the polynomial within the boundary. This allows you to easily pinpoint the location of the zeros for the current polynomial. In this case, the two zeros of the polynomial are positioned at the points of color singularities, well inside the boundary. When you choose a branch cut for the square root that connects these two zeros, we obtain a single-valued function outside of the boundary. Any concerns can be set aside anyways once you witness how precisely the series expansion aligns with our contour directly generated by the iteration process. For the next equation, the explicit solution for z results in four different branches. Each of them represents a piece of the boundary. However, our method of Taylor expansion turns out to be much more elegant, since it can describe the full contour with one single expression. Initially, we take the fourth root on both sides, expand the root and compute the Taylor expansion of the inverse function. In this case, we need to consider eight terms of the expansion to obtain a satisfactory approximation for the boundary which now separates the Mandelbrot set from all the points that reach the point of no return in less than three iterations. Continuing this process for a few more layers, we find that we need to incorporate an increasing number of terms in the series expansion. Interestingly, it turns out that we roughly need as many terms as the degree of the polynomial. The final contour line is plotted for a polynomial with degree 4096. Although this is an impressive number of terms, it only roughly corresponds to the 13th iteration. When the actual Mandelbrot set is plotted, it is common to use at least 100 iterations. An attempt to trace its intricate details analytically would require about billions of billions of billions of coefficients, making it clearly infeasible. This underscores the amazing power of iterative methods. While the property of iteration can be grasped analytically in principle, our technical understanding is generally limited to around 10 iterations. In this sense, the Mandelbrot set retains its fractal nature, even though it can, in theory, be approximated by smooth functions to every level of detail. Let us revisit in the series expansion for the various contour lines. It is apparent that later series expansions agree on more and more terms. This is intuitively clear, as the small coefficients correspond to large arrows that shape the overall structure, while later the smaller coefficients refine the details. They converge to a final series that corresponds to the contour of infinitely many iterations, which is the boundary of the Mandelbrot set. Additionally, you can also observe that the radius of the parametrizing circle converges to the unit circle. Hence, the last line can be perceived as a map from the unit circle to the boundary of the Mandelbrot set. This introduces a new scheme of approximation. Instead of focusing on the contour lines, we now consider maps of the unit circle provided by finite truncations of the last expression. 
The following animation displays the interplay of 100 arrows, where each arrow's length is determined by the coefficient and its rotation frequency is dictated by the exponent of the corresponding term in the sequence. While the curve traced out by the arrows is limited to the first 100 terms of the series, the second curve showcases the result of the first 20,000 terms. It is truly remarkable how beautiful the shape of the Mandelbrot set is encapsulated by this curve. It does appear somewhat mystical, as each arrow follows its own constant speed. Yet the collective action of all the arrows, or phrased differently, the subtle relationship between their length and rotation frequency, elegantly encircles the distinct features of the Mandelbrot set. As of now, more than 5 million of the coefficients for the boundary expansion of the Mandelbrot set have been computed. There is a nice recursion relation that shortcuts the computation of these coefficients. References for these are provided in the video description. Not only do these coefficients allow us to trace out the shape of the boundary for the Mandelbrot set, but they also open the door to computing its area. However, going through this door has to wait for another time. The last animations play with the approximation for the Mandelbrot set in a different variation, adding a touch of exploration and creativity to the mathematical beauty of the Mandelbrot set. I hope to see you again soon. That's all for now. Bye.